Today we're going to make a shirt that has three different colors in it and we're going to show you how to upload a design and make it a cutting file. So let's click on upload and then I'm going to go upload image and then I'm going to go to where I already saved the image on my computer. So you can see it has one, two colors here and a third color here. I'm going to choose complex just because I want to make sure I get a clear delineation between all those colors. So we are going to need to do this process of uploading and cleaning up the image once for every color that's in here. So I am going to use the magic wand and just click on the word California and get rid of it completely because we're not using that layer. We're working on the word Southern right now. So this would be perfect for the background gold layer because then I'll layer the burgundy over the top. Okay, so now we go continue. And we do not want to save it as a print and cut. This would print it on the printer and cut it out. We want to cut this on a colored vinyl. So this is going to be our Southern California layer. And I'm going to call this one the gold, just so I remember. Then upload the exact same image. Complex, because we have multiple colors and two of them are right on top of each other. So now we want to create the burgundy layer. So we'll erase the black. And now we're going to want to erase that gold for each and every letter. So let me just go in here, make sure we get this inside one. And it really helps that I had a nice crisp clean image to start with. So we had all these nice crisp lines that wasn't all fuzzy and blurry. I think personally, that's the biggest tip I have is to make sure you use good, clean, crisp images. My daughter actually designed these herself in Illustrator. So now I'm going to preview that. Oop, I can see a little shadow in there. So let's zoom in and get that. Did you see that too? Like right there, there's a little bit of shadow. So now I can use my eraser come in and just clean up that little shadow. This is why I like to preview because you never know when you might get a little shadow. Oops, now I dipped into the H. So I'm going to just undo so that I can go across that again. Make sure you haven't had too much caffeine, otherwise your hands might be shaky for this. So I'm just going anywhere that I see a little shadow line from my yellow. And actually there's a few. So now if I hit preview, I can look again and look for any shadows. There's another one. I really like that preview button so you can see. Can you imagine if this was a really pixelated image, how much there would be to clean up? Okay, let's, let's go through all the letters now. I'm just gonna scroll through. Those look great. So now we're gonna continue. And I'm gonna save this, Southern California. Let's call this the burgundy layer. Perfect. Let's do that one more time. Because remember, we have to do this one time for every color that is in our design. And this is how you're creating those colored layers. So now we're doing the black. Okay, so I'm going to use my wand and I'm going to hit all the yellows and the burgundies. And I actually could take my 
eraser tool and make the circle really big and just kind of go back and forth over here. The reason I'm not just cropping this out is because that's going to kind of change the size of my overall image. And I want these to all come in and be scaled proportionally to each other. And if I started messing with how it's cropped, it would distort that. So that is why I am choosing to just do the erasing. Okay, let's do a preview, make sure we got it all. Oops, there's some shadow. Let's preview again to see where those shadows still are lingering. One thing I do wish is when you hit preview if the preview would stay on until you ended it, because as soon as I start clicking, the preview goes away. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna zoom back out and hit preview one more time. I like it. So now we're gonna go continue. And again, we want to click over here. So we save as a cut file, and this is going to be a black layer. So then we'll save that. So now I can select all three of these, and I can see that all three are selected because they all have a green outline. Also, I have little previews down here. Insert them all. And they're going to come in really big because of how the file was created, but that's okay because that kept everything nice and crisp. Okay, so we want California there. This, this one was the gold. So let's change that to the gold layer. This was the burgundy. So let's change that to burgundy. And now I can slide this one on top of that one. And Let's zoom out. So now I'm going to take all of them and do a big window around all of them. And now I want to group them together. Grouping allows the layers to stay separate in their separate colors, but I can now scale them all together. So now I can scale them in and let's say probably about 10 inches wide for a shirt. And now you can see it's all scaled proportionally and set up for cutting. Now, if I hit make it, oh wait, first I wanna save this project. Let's save this as Southern California. Okay, so now it's saved because we wouldn't want to lose our work. So now when I click make it, you can see that it's breaking everything into different colored mats. So now it's going to cut each one of those mats separately. Because I'm going to do this out of an iron on vinyl, I would want to make sure I click mirror. So that's going to flip the image. Here's a little tip. If you're anything like me and you always forget to mirror, Take your whole image once it's designed and use the flip button in here and flip it horizontally. Now, when I hit make it, it's already going to be mirrored. I do this when I'm using an image that I know I'm always going to use on shirts. I'm never going to cut it out for everything, anything else. So I'm for sure going to want it mirrored. Just it's kind of a safety net for myself. So now we can cut these and get ready to put them on the shirt. Now for this shirt, we measured the actual shirt that we were gonna place it on and the 10 inches that I had originally designed was a little large. So we scaled it down to be eight and a half inches in width. Then we place our yellow iron-on vinyl face down so the shiny side is down. Now we load it into the Cricut and cut.
Now we loaded the burgundy. Again, get the shiny side down. And we're gonna load that into our Cricut mat. And now we're gonna put the black on our mat, shiny side down. I did notice this piece was curling in the corner, so I just tacked it down with some painter's tape. Now we're gonna use our weeding tool. It has a nice little pick at the end. And we're just gonna weed out the centers of any letters and any negative space that we don't want on our shirt. If you ever are having problems figuring out what to weed away and what to leave, look at your actual image and kind of look for the cut lines. Now for the outer edge, I like to just kind of get a corner started and then peel it back. Ooh. I'm using the Caesar Easy Weed. Look at how nice that just pulls off. And then I just gotta come back in here and clean up some of these little pieces. So this one's done. Now I just have to do the same thing for these other two layers. For this shirt, we're gonna do three different colors. So first we place the gold on the sh shirt and now we're going to press it. Make sure to read your directions for your vinyl and your heat press to use the correct temperature and timing. Now that I have this on the shirt in the press, I'm going to just lay a little tea towel over the top. This kind of protects so I'm not pressing right on the carrier sheet. You can also use a piece of Teflon. And now we'll let this cool so that we can peel off the carrier sheet. Now that it's cooled off, we're going to just peel off the carrier sheet. I like to peel kind of an angle. That way, if anything starts to come up, I can just put the carrier sheet back down and maybe press it again. Now we're going to layer the second color over the top. Since I'm using my Caesar Easy Weed that comes with the carrier sheet, I can just look right through that carrier, sh carrier sheet to line up my letters. And you can see that I'm kind of shifting things back and forth to get it just right. And now we're ready to press this layer. Since the second letter has just a little bit of a border from the, the underneath layer, when we moved it from here to the heat press, it shifted a little bit. So we wanted to secure it with some heat resistant tape. And now I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper over the top of this so that I'm not pressing directly on the carrier sheet. Now we let all of this cool and we'll peel off that carrier sheet. So release the tape first because that's gonna be the stickiest part. And then we peel the carrier sheet off. And then when I get to this tape, that's just gonna come up with the carrier sheet. Now it's time to place the final layer. So now we can press this. All right, so now we're gonna put parchment paper over this because we really wanna protect the word Southern because that's vinyl there with no more carrier sheet. And now we'll let that cool. Now we're gonna start with that tape and then just peel back the carrier sheet. And when you look at this, you should be able to see the texture of the fibers of your shirt coming through. If you feel like it's not really coming through, I would say put it in the heat press again and do another press. Make sure to put a piece of parchment paper over it so you're protecting your vinyl. So make sure to like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and leave me a comment. Let me know how you're gonna use this tutorial to make your own shirt.